and welcome to the Giving Voice to Depression podcast, produced in partnership with Mental Health America of Wisconsin. We're your co-hosts, Bridget and Terry. Each week, through intimate, candid conversations with guests, we explore different perspectives on and experiences of depression. We keep it real because the illness is real. We keep it hopeful because there truly is hope in spite of what depression tells you. We are not experts or therapists. We are sisters and best friends who live with depression and have learned that hearing others speak openly and without shame makes it easier to believe depression is a common and treatable illness, not a personal failing. You are far from alone. Hello, Bridget. Hi, Terry. So as you can imagine, Terry and I have a lot of conversations about depression, and we're always enlivened when someone who doesn't have it asks us questions. Admittedly, there are often things like, doesn't everyone get sad? Or have you tried yoga or (laughs) running? But even those comments open the door to a conversation that has a lot of potential to educate and break down stigma. It's an opportunity, and we're glad to have it. Absolutely. And I recently had an opportunity to have a conversation that really stood out. Unlike what we call the usual questions, this man, Elliot, was reflecting on a past relationship, really trying to learn what he now realizes he didn't know or understand about depression when married to a woman who had it. And that intrigued us. And he was so honest, too. I mean, the way that he kind of revealed to us the questions and the concerns that were, you know, battling it out in his head, I thought he was incredibly authentic and, and um, vulnerable with us. I loved, I loved his questions. Um, and we asked him if he would be willing to let us record his questions and then play them back for a professional and get some answers because odds are pretty good that he's not the only person that has the same concerns. Mm-hmm. So here is Elliot from his phone, which he admits everyone says he needs to replace, vulnerably asking the questions he wishes he'd known to ask years ago about understanding a partner with depression and how to be a partner when things get dark. In the early years, she did not have depression, or at least no signs of it. But as time wore on, uh, the depression became evident. And, and she didn't know what was wrong, and neither did I. But we knew something wasn't right until she was diagnosed with depression. We didn't really realize there was a cause. So the first question I had at the time, what would be the early signs that a loved one should not to diagnose, but to be aware of so that you have a heads up that this may be a sign of something that you need to really be empathetic with and really in tune with your partner with to to try to manage it as best as can. In reply is Mike Stenz, a clinical social worker at MHA of Wisconsin, our new partner. Answering your questions just got a lot easier with experienced therapists down the hall. So typically with depression, there are symptoms, like there are symptoms for any kind of illness. So you might notice uh, that the person is withdrawn that maybe they're tearful at times, you might notice. Things are different, things that they used to enjoy that maybe you used to enjoy together, they're no longer as interested in doing. Maybe they're isolating a little bit more, uh, not wanting to go out, staying in the room, bedroom or whatever, watching more TV, sleeping more, uh, restless sleep. The next Q&A are framed from the male perspective, but the experience, uncertainty, and frustrations are hardly limited to that. And personally for me, I am a, okay, this is a problem, let's find a solution and let's fix it kind of guy. Um, I don't know if most men are that way. I suspect that a lot of men are that way. For me, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to say, okay, you know, what do we have to do? Do I have to be a better income earner? Do I have to be a better lover? Do I have to pay more attention? Do I have to not be drawn as much? Whatever it is, let's let's do it. Because I really hate the idea of you having to live with this depression and, and in fact, that maybe I'm the cause of it. Well, it's very challenging to take on something that you can't fix. And someone with depression, especially severe depression, is going to tell you that. It's not something that's easily fixed. But that this is a real illness. 
and that it's not on him to fix it. He's not responsible. It's great to ask, like, what can I do to let your spouse know that no matter what, I'm going to see you through this. I'm going to be there as much as I'm able to. Let's maybe get help together. Good reminder, right? We are not the cause of someone else's depression. And we're not the cause of our own either, right? Whatever stew of physical, environmental, genetic, and other factors influence depression, we do not choose it. And it's not a personal weakness. Don't even get us started. But there are things we can do to support someone in an episode or stuck in the pit or whatever phrase you favor. If we learn how to talk, when to talk, and what to say. So I really just had to say, okay, what can I do to help? And the answer many times was nothing. There was nothing you could do to help. And I didn't know that that was okay. And I didn't know that her struggle didn't involve me by her side. So I didn't know what to do. Um, And then the whole time, the, the, feeling of, do I have enough empathy towards this situation? Uh, I always encourage couples where there's depression in the relationship to seek not only treat the person with the depression, but to treat the family and so the couple too. So he does need some support, I think, around the idea of that the depression isn't because of him. Now, there could be some things that could be better in the marriage that might make stuff make the depression worse, but he's definitely not to blame for the depression. And that's something that comes with some education that he can do on his own or in therapy. After doing both, Elliot's questions did change in small but significant ways. What can I do to help? And I won't say help fix, and I won't say um, help make it better. I will just say help. Conversations are going to be very important for this couple. This is a very difficult thing to bring up. And, you know, so the person that has depression is probably feeling in some way guilty about the fact that they're different and they're noticing that the family might be impacted by their depression. Um, One of the things that helps with depression is to be physically moving. And so one suggestion that I have is that maybe a couple go for a walk that that so that you know they're both active they're getting some fresh air and then they can have these kind of conversations as they're walking it might even make it easier because they don't have to do it face to face mike's suggestion to do something while talking is something we both believe in for many the least comfortable way to share is when someone utters those dreaded words we've got to talk several previous guests have emphasized that the So what are you experiencing when you're like that? Or how can I support you when you're in it conversations? Work much better when the person is feeling healthier. It is just too hard to explain what's going on while it's going on. And then um, the side effects of the medication was a huge question mark next. I didn't know what they would be. One of the concerns you have, or I had, was is my child safe. I mean, you hear about all the, the, the things that can, that, uh, that could possibly happen, but you just want to make sure that the members of the family in the house are safe. You don't know. And it may be an uneducated, uh, stupid mindset in retrospect or in the eyes of anybody who knows, but I guarantee that it is a question that the loved one of a depressed patient has in their mind. Again, clinical social worker Mike Stenz responds. His his concern to him is very legitimate. Um, So medications definitely can have side effects, and it is a process for people to find out what's going to work best for them. I have not heard of any side effects that involve danger to children specifically. So um, when people are successful in a family system or in a couple, when they're successful at treating depression, it involves the entire family as much as possible. And I would encourage this man or anybody who's married to somebody who has depression to be part of the whole process. So you can talk to the doctor. I have never, I've worked with a lot of psychiatrists. I've never known one 
that will not respond to the spouse or invite them in? So these are all really great questions for a psychiatrist. And so as a team, you go in and you say, these are our concerns and let the doctor explain what's going on so that he can feel reassured and feel safe that his children are okay. Yeah, and then um, I think the last thing that I was concerned about is what's our long, long-term prognosis of being together with this disease? Did my life just take a change that is so incredibly different from what my life was that you know, I don't really want to look forward to this situation or should I just embrace it and are we going to be okay long term? Is this relationship going to be good and just have the normal struggles that everybody else has? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting to hear it from outside because, you know, my defensive nature says like, well, what about her? You know, she's the one living, you know, she's the one experiencing it, but it is not just us. It's everybody around us who is affected by the change in our behavior and our thoughts and our ability to experience joy and our ability to share our ability to share joy. So I I understand and appreciate that question, even though originally my my impulse was sort of like, yeah. But yes, I, I I understand what you're saying. It, yeah. Well, sure, and I would expect that. I mean, if I was in that situation, I would expect the same kind of defensive posture. I would be I would be in it. But when you're on the other side, you think, "Holy crap!" You know, my my loved one who I used to like bounce around with and have fun with and enjoy life with and raise family with and and everything was great now has something that I don't know what the ramifications are. I don't know what what this means to me long term. Are we all of a sudden not going to have any more fun? Are we all of a sudden having to modify everything about our life? Do I want to stay in this relationship? So I start looking for a girlfriend now because she's going to go off the deep end one day and leave me behind? And you know, what do I do? And I know these are hard thoughts and cold, but I had them. I had those thoughts, and I didn't know how to handle them. I mean, those questions weighed on me and weighed on me and weighed on me. It sounds like that's that's some kind of either-or thinking. It's black or white. So he's talking about his life as if it's either going to be like it always was or everything's got to be modified and different. And maybe this is just part of that early... um, stage of learning that depression has become part of the relationship i think over time that will all go away and you'll see all the things you used to see there'll have to be some adjustments again like we said with any kind of illness we just got to take it on in a different way and we have to make some changes but it it shouldn't be they shouldn't impact the relationship so significantly now it could but um but i don't think as much as he might be talking about So those were Elliot's questions, but while we still had a therapist and a mic, we asked one more. We asked if there's anything else, if he was talking to a room full of couples and one partner had depression and one didn't, that he would say to those without it, you really need to understand this. First, that the family is involved as much as possible. That includes the children, too. Younger children, not so much. But if you have adolescent kids, they need to be part of it at some point. They need to understand that mom's behavior is, if it's the mom or the dad, that their parents' behavior is because of this. It's not them, because kids will take it on in the same way. Is it me? I'm not a good student. I didn't. So um, it's important for the family to be involved, to learn as much as they can about depression. The other thing is just to have some hopefulness about it, that it is treatable. And again, I don't know the exact number. I know that when I was in school, what I learned about depression, it's the number one thing we treat as therapists, is that 90% or more do get better with treatment. If I didn't believe it, if I didn't see it, I wouldn't be in this profession because it would be too hard. So I have hope when people come in, I see people get better every day. I so appreciate that Elliot just flat out said, I didn't know what to do because that's the, you know, that's the crux of the reality of it is that the person with depression doesn't know what to do to make it go away. And the partner doesn't know what to do to make it go away. Mm -hmm. It's just smack dab there. Mm -hmm. 
It is just smack dab there, and it is a difficult thing to understand from the inside, and I'm certain it's a difficult thing, as you say, to understand from the outside. So we appreciate any opportunity to pull back the curtain and at least start those discussions. Absolutely. Thank you, Elliot, for putting words to uh, that your reality. Mm-hmm. And if anybody else has any questions about uh, depression management tools or the differences in therapies available or anything, let us know and we'll see if we can get some answers now that we have um, some professionals on our team. And like Elliot said, the things that weigh on him are no doubt similar to thoughts and worries other people were having. And the same is true for anybody listening. What you're wondering about, somebody else is too. So let us know and we'll see if we can get some information. Absolutely. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, Bridge. Thanks, Elliot. And thanks to Mike for answering his questions. We truly hope that our podcast brings a little more understanding, helps you better articulate your experience of depression, or better understand how to support someone else's. We invite you to join us for daily posts on the Giving Voice to Depression Facebook page and on Twitter and Instagram at Voice Depression. It is a comfort to be among fellow travelers on depression's dark road. And remember, if you're struggling, speak up. If someone else is, listen up.